So hello everyone and welcome to this important session on oral carcinoma reporting. So head and neck malignancies are one of the difficult topics uh, because of the complex anatomy that is associated with it. So I'll be sharing few cases with uh, you along with the reports and some teaching points so that uh, this complex topic is actually simplified to some extent. So starting with our case today, so here we have a 40 year old male who came with a large mass in the left side of the face and he has a history of chewing tobacco and this is the MRI done for this patient. So these are the axial T2 weighted images. I'm scrolling from cranial to caudal direction. So this is the maxilla. Uh, these are the muscles of the tongue. Here we can see this mass, this T2 hyper intense mass which is actually epicentered at the retromolar trigone and the posterior alveolar ridge. This mass is actually involving the skin. It's an ulceroproliferative mass lesion. It is extending to involve the masticator space. And also we can see that the canal, the inferior alveolar canal is also involved. These are the T1 post contrast images, axial section, where again we can see that this epicenter of this mass is in the retromolar trigone and the alveolar ridge. It definitely involves the gingival buccal sulcus, but the epicenter is in the retromolar trigone. And the masticator space is also involved. These are some nodes in the submental region. And these are the T1 post contrast images, coronal section, where again we can see this heterogeneously enhancing mass region. The craniocaudal extent of the mass lesion can be very well determined here that this mass lesion is extending up to the inferior wall of the left maxillary sinus. These are the sagittal post contrast images where we can see this mass lesion, heterogeneous enhancing mass lesion and there is no supra notch, notch extension of this mass. This is very important. There is no supra notch extension of this mass lesion. Of course there are some nodes here, the submental region as well as the submandibular region. This mass does not extend uh, supra notch area and the skull base is also clear so this is the report that i had given and every word in this report is extremely important it's an ill-defined heterogeneously enhancing ulceroproliferative soft tissue mass so it is very important to mention the morphology of the mass whether it is plaque like or ulceroproliferative of size approx uh, 5.7 into 2.8 into 3.4 centimeters very important to mention the size as well as the doi that is depth of invasion epicentered in the left retromora trigone and the left posterior alveolar ridge so it is very important to mention the origin of the mass lesion whether it is actually arising from the alveolar ridge or it is a gingival buccal carcinoma the lesion appears iso intense to muscle on T1, heterogeneously hyper intense on T2 and involves the left lower lip and left buccal mucosa with extension into the left masticator space posteriorly. All the spaces of the neck are very important and you should remember it thoroughly to actually determine the extent of the mass lesion, whether it involves any space of the neck. All the spaces of the neck are to be assessed in case of any oral carcinoma. The lesion also involves the left lower gingival alveolar sulcus and laterally extends to involve the left buccomesitric region up to the skin surface. So it is very important to mention whether the mass lesion extends up to the skin surface, involves the skin surface, how much of the skin is actually involved so that it gives an idea to the treating surgeon as to how much of the graft would be required during surgery. And also the skin is very rich in lymphatics. The lymphatic spread can also be determined by this. The lesion infiltrates the adjacent left hemimandible causing its erosion. It is very very important to mention how much of the mandible is actually eroded or involved in a case of oral carcinoma because uh, mandible reconstruction requires fibular graft and it will give an idea to the surgeon how much of the fibular graft is actually required. Superiorly the lesion extends up to the inferior wall of the left maxillary sinus and involves the upper gingival alveolar sulcus with no evident supra notch extension. So this is the most important thing that is required for any surgeon, whether the lesion actually has any supra notch, that is supra condylar notch, whether the lesion has any supra notch extension, which is very well seen on the sagittal images. So this has to be mentioned in all the reports of oral carcinoma. The lesion also involves the left al inferior alveolar canal. So this is also a very important point to be mentioned in any report. 
because most of the carcinomas of the retromolar trigone will involve the inferior alveolar canal uh, inferior alveolar canal once involved it the nerve once involved it can cause perineural extension of the tumor also uh, there was no evident involvement of the tongue or the floor of the mouth which also has to be mentioned in in the report and there was no extension into the submandibular or the parotid space few enlarged lymph nodes were seen in the submental and bilateral submandibular region and the left lower cervical region uh, so features were suggestive of an advanced t4b uh, disease of oral carcinoma so this is the tnm staging for oral carcinoma which has to be remembered while reporting so this is the t1 stages when the tumor is less than equal to 2 cm in greatest dimension with depth of invasion of less than equal to 5 mm so uh, along with the size the depth of invasion is also very important to be given in any report and t4 stage is uh, moderately or very well advanced t4a is moderately advanced local disease while t4b is very advanced local disease in t4a uh, the tumor is more than 4 cm with depth of invasion more than 10 mm the tumor invades the adjacent structures that is through the cortical bone of mandible maxilla or into the maxillary sinus or into the skin of the face t4b is very advanced local disease where the tumor uh, invades the masticator space pterygoid plates or skull base and in cases the internal carotid artery so our case uh, actually involved the masticator space hence labeled as t4b so coming to a very important space in the oral cavity which has a lot of clinical significance and since my first year i have always been hearing this that whenever you report a case of oral carcinoma you have to mention about the retromolar trigone so what exactly is retromolar trigone and why is it called a trigone what are the boundaries of this particular triangle so it's actually a triangular area of mucosa which is covering the anterior surface of the ascending ramus of the mandible so we can see this mucosal layer which is actually covering the Uh, the ramus of the mandible and it's actually triangular in shape we can see this particular uh, triangle here so this will give you a better idea these two pictures as to where exactly this retromolar trigone lies so medially the boundaries are to be remembered by heart medially it is bounded this medially it is bounded by the temporal crest of the mandible laterally the anterior border of the ramus of the mandible so temporal crest medially anterior border of the ramus of the mandible laterally and the base is actually by the socket of the third molar this is the base and the apex is adjacent to the uh, tuberosity of the maxilla so maxilla will come here so the tuberosity of the maxilla will lie adjacent to the apex of this retromolar trigone so all these boundaries are very important and it's actually a triangular area of mucosa which is covering the anterior surface of the ascending ramus so why is this so important it's because it's because underlying this particular mucosa is pterygomandibular raphe so pterygomandibular raphe or pterygomandibular ligament is a fibrous band of buccopharyngeal fascia extending from the uh, humulus of the medial pterygoid plate to the mylohyoid ridge of the mandible the pterygomandibular raphe lies between the anterior tonsillar pillar and the retromolar trigone so this this actually is the pterygomandibular raphe which lies beneath the mucosa that is the retromolar trigone and it provides attachment to buccinator anteriorly and the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx posteriorly so this pterygomandibular raphe is very important So pterygomandibular raphe forms a junction of oral cavity, oropharynx, and infratemporal fossa. Hence, once the tumor reaches the RMT, it gets access to various critical areas. With posterior extension, the tumor enters the infratemporal fossa and involves the medial and lateral pterygoids. Once the pterygoid muscles are involved, it becomes inoperable. Medially, the tumor may extend to involve the tonsils via the superior constrictor muscle. The superior tumor spread along the pterygomandibular raphe involves the base of the skull and the nasopharynx. while the inferior spread occurs to the floor of the mouth mandibular cortex is actually in close proximity to the mucosa of rmt and it is very uh, eroded in very early cases of rmt uh, tumor as was seen in our case the uh, mandible was completely eroded and the inferior alveolar nerve also lies in close proximity to the rmt and hence uh, it also gets involved along with perineural spread of the tumor which was also there in our case 
So this is a summary of the important points to be remembered while reporting. That is the involvement of the skin, which is very important because it's rich in lymphatics and also required for surgical reconstruction. Whether the, the morphology of the particular lesion, whether it is plaque-like or proliferative, whether the lesion is epicentered in the alveolar ridge or GB sulcus, retromolar trigone involvement because retromolar trigone has access to many critical areas, supranotch extension, very important for the surgeons, extent of involvement of the mandible, particularly for reconstruction with the help of fibula, the inferior alveolar nerve canal for perineural invasion, the neck spaces that are involved, the base of the skull involvement and the involvement of the pterygoid which uh, uh, becomes inoperable.